Hey there, everyone. This is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Thank you so much for being here. You know that I try to go around the whole planet trying to find the best people on it so that I can bring them on this show. I like people that come on here to like to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. And today I met this um, amazing woman. She's funny as all get out. So I cannot wait to introduce her to you. Her name is Christina Massey, and she's going to be here with me today. I'm not even sure where this is going or what we're going to talk about, but let's go. How are you, Christina? I am great. I'm great. Oh my gosh. I love that you said I was funny. I was like, am I? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Already. Okay, guys. Already <laughs> is all I'm saying. <laughs> See, here's the thing. You got to know this, uh, Nina, that I am a type seven in the Enneagram. So everybody is my friend and I love to connect. Right. And so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, Nina's my girl. Like we would have so much. Oh fun my God. Hilarious. <laughs> I, I agree. My, she's my kind of people. Okay. So I'm I super agree. excited to be here. Me too. I'm so excited to be here too. I mean, we got connected through uh, Clubhouse, oh. through, mm -hmm. right? Through Clubhouse and through at our friend, Adam Shively, who is amazing. I love his yes. podcast. He's hilarious. He's awesome. Yeah. He's funny really guy. Awesome, right? Yeah. Like, he's really awesome. Yeah. He, I love him. Love yeah, him. He's, he's, um, you know what I have found is there there are a few people in the podcasting world that have just given us so much information mm -hmm. and I'm just like, wow, thank you so much. You know, it's not about competition, it's about collaboration. Absolutely. And I, think, I think it's just really beautiful. So yeah, you know, there's enough room for everybody. It's perfect. Like, you know, I agree. I agree with that. I think, um, well, let's get into our conversation in a second. I do want to know more about you, Christina. Okay. So um, I didn't get to, to know too much about you, but I'm really excited to learn more about what you do and who you are. But let's yeah. start with who you are. Let's tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, who am I? That's a loaded question. I know. I <laughs> love starting that way. <laughs> I'm like, wait. Do you want me to go way back or do you want How me to far just back as you want to no, go? No, don't ever do that, girl, because I'll be telling you about when I was a baby and you're going to be like, that is not what, what I meant. Okay. <laughs> no, so, no, I'll be um, like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I am flexible. <laughs> yeah, so let's see. I, I'm a midlife woman. Um, I've been in the beauty industry for 13 years, um, building up women and businesses for, um, for my current company that I work for. And um, just recently made a transition into the podcasting world with my business partner. So I'm one half of Midlife Moxie. And let's see, um, I'm a caretaker for my dad. Uh, I'm a wife. Uh, I have two grown children. So I have a bonus daughter who just turned 19. Thanks very much. Aww. And I have a 20 year old son who just turned 20 and he serves in the military, in the, um, in the air force. So, uh, all my kids are pretty much like out of the house, like go, go fly. It's go a beautiful fly. thing. Let me tell you. Oh girl. Can I just say this? Like my husband. Sorry guys, if you're watching, but it is a beautiful thing. <laughs> it is. Like my husband and I, we take, we take, uh, vacations like once a month now. So we go and we take a vacation. And it's just a few days, whatever. But they're like, you're leaving again. And we're like, yeah, yeah. You make your own money. You can go on vacation by yourself now. So um, we don't have to do all the kids stuff. It's great. It's so fabulous. It's so, so great. Um, so that's that's me kind of a little bit in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. All right. So let's get into what you like to do with women. Now, you said that you were in the beauty industry, but you also said you like to build up women. Right. Yeah. So what does that mean to you to build up women? Right. So I've been with the, with a company for 13 years and what I'll tell you is, Oh, I forgot to tell you this. I'm in recovery. <laughs> so a lot of people like to That's know awesome. that. Yeah. yeah. So I started my, um, my business 13 years ago when I got sober. So I was four months clean and sober and I decided that I thought it was a good idea to start a business at the same time. And the the premises of the business is really, you know, um, nothing happens until somebody sells something, right? Mm. But you also want to bring people along. And so I decided that I wanted to be a leader in the company that I worked for. So I've earned cars, I've taken trips, I've earned diamonds. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm a hustler. Like I like 
and sometimes that has a bad name to it, right? You're a husband. No, not in a bad way, but just right. that I, I love having people and it doesn't have to be just women and just people in general. I like for them to maximize their God given potential. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How, many, how many times do we see somebody and we're like, gosh, you have so much more. You have so much more. Right. So I just love to pull that so much more out of people. Um, and, and so that's what I do. And so that's what I've been doing for the last 13 years. And uh, that's how I met my business partner is that we, we both um, are top in our field and um, we both drive cars from our company and we both have earned several pieces of diamonds and all of that great stuff. We right. And we thought, well, let's, let's kind of shift a little bit and um, still, still love the beauty industry, still loving, loving building up women and helping them build their business so that they can have a life of legacy. So that's, that's what I, that's what I do. Girl, I just love it. So let's get into what you talked about here for a second, because you talked about um, pulling out because it's funny when you said that, because I'm like, oh, she is my like like my uh, my sister from another mister or something Um, because that's something that i say all the time that i love pulling out the giftings in other people it's just it's just a beautiful thing to do so when you say you know like to you what does that mean like a god-given gift like you see that god-given gift in someone what does that mean to you when you say that yeah so i i think that so many times people want to be seen and they want to be heard And so you have to create the space for people to be seen and be heard. And when you step into a new business or a new job, it's very Mm -hmm. uncomfortable. You, you might get a little anxious because you're not sure if you're going to perform correctly. Um, But there's this, there's this um, value that doesn't come from Mm -hmm. your job or your performance. There's a value that comes from, you know, and you can call it whatever you want. I call it God, Mm -hmm, you know, and and so, so there, there, that value is there and he has given you gifts and talents and skill sets. And so I just have a really um, strong gift in looking at a person and going, gosh, I can see so much Mm -hmm. in you. Mm -hmm. And so what I start to do is I start to say, oh my gosh, Susie. You are such a connector. You love connecting with the community. You love connecting with um, women in faith or, you know, in fitness. And wow, where do you see that going? How can that help your business? And they're like, wait, I don't ever see myself as a connector. What is she saying? Right. But I see that in somebody or I see, wow, you know what? You can really empathize well, Susie. You know, I, I'm sure that people love that when you can enter into a situation with somebody and find commonality because of your empathy, because of where you've been, and it's not sharing your story, but it's entering into their story. Yeah. Um, I, I love stuff like that. So I just see things and I just start to call them out as I see them. So people will perform at that level. Does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. That's the way yeah. I believe as well. And I think that that is a gift also from God to us yes. to be able to do that, right? Yeah. And and empathy and sympathy sometimes comes through going through things. That, you know, usually have to go through something to have that empathy. Yes. Are, you, are you open to sharing a little bit about what you've been through that has, yeah. you know, made you kind of like find that women and, and pulling that out of women is so valuable to you? Yeah, I think early on, um, I'll just start from from when I was little. Um, my mom went to work. My dad worked swing shifts, so I was with my dad. He taught me how to be tough. He taught me how to um, just respect myself. Um, and I mean, that kind of went down the the tubes, you know, when when you hit teenage years. You're oh like, yeah, of course. Respecting myself, what does that mean? You know. <laughs> So, so anyway, so okay, like, I always tell people, I said, listen, I've been around the block numerous times. Okay. I'm not ashamed. It is what it is. That's right? what it is. Right. It has made me who I am. And I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I never say I regret the things that I've done, but I will tell you that at an early age, my dad really, he was the, he was the voice, you know, he was the voice. And my mom was very like, you know, chill, 
you know, um, very observant. Um, and then I went into my teenage years and I started to dibble and dabble into, you know, alcohol and mm -hmm. drugs. And, mm -hmm. and then I was trying to find my value and my worth and, and men and, um, and, and chasing the bag. Like I was like, the party is not going to stop. Right. It is right. not going to stop. Was in several car accidents. Uh, oh that were not my fault, but I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, you right. know, had, right. had guns to my head mm -hmm. and in the wrong place at the wrong time, met my son's father. Okay. Girl, can we just be girlfriends here? Okay. Yes. I am the total cliche. Where'd you meet your baby daddy? At a nightclub. At a club. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play. Don't I'm play. Not I'm not a club. <laughs> and I have a beautiful son from it. Like. Who, who are you to judge me? You know? <laughs> oh my God, I'm the total cliche. Um, but he was so good looking, and I just was like, mm, okay, you know. Um, but so uh, met him, met him at, at a nightclub, and ended up, you know, just hooking up. Not that night. I wasn't. I wasn't that bad. Okay? <laughs> just, just for the record, Nina, I have never had a one night stand. Just for a record. Oh my God. And now I'm married, so right. there is no, there is no one night stand here. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're dying. You're like, I'm oh dying. I have, to put, I have to put explicit on this. Podcast. I just want to go out with him for a drink with you. Is what I want to do. I just want to go out for a drink, but not at a club, not at a nightclub. We're married now. We're married. Actually. Actually, I have to tell you, we have a we have a nightclub out here in um well, I'm close to Sacramento, so we have a nightclub out here and it's called Mangoes and it's the it's the you know, it's mixed of hip hop and reggaeton and you know, all that all the good stuff, right? Right. And so I'm like, let's go, let's go. So I take my husband and he's he just stands there. <laughs> that he would be mine there. all day. <laughs> yeah, he just stands there. I'm like, what are you doing? It's like I'm just looking, looking at everything, just standing here. I'm like, okay, you, you, you okay? You okay? You want to go get a drink? Like what, what do you want to do? He just stands there. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 you know, then I met my, I'll, I'll go back. So I met, I met to, I met my uh, son's father. And um, when I met him, we had just this, just really bad relationship. When you're in your twenties, you have really poor Poor, poor relationships, I would say. Yeah. Is, is that okay to say on here? Is yeah. That okay. Absolutely. So I'm like, <laughs> I just have to make sure. Um, and and it ended up becoming abusive, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I always tell people, listen, I got my blows in now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going down without a fight. Yeah. And I can laugh at it today. Right. Um, but domestic violence is a really big deal. Yeah, yeah. I, I went through it. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So so when you're when you're not healthy and whole, there are things that happen. And mm -hmm. so those things happened and he ended up leaving. So I was a single mom for 16 years and uh, truth be told, I, I never thought I was going to get married. Right. I was like, nah, I'm, it's probably not in the cards. I was raising my son, wanted to make sure that he was set up for life. Right. right. That he had a solid foundation that he wasn't going to, and his dad is a great guy today. So he's no, like, you know, we've mended, mended fences and we are good. Um, great. I have, I have forgiven him. He has forgiven me. We, we have moved on. Um, but that was my life. My life was my son, my business, and just really building up women. And then I met my husband. So two years ago, I met my husband. Oh, right that's after, good. Yeah, right after I turned 40. I mean, God has jokes, okay? So <laughs> he has jokes. <laughs> Let me tell you why, Nina. Okay, so I typically like you know, the dark, chocolatey, caramel, right? My husband is not. He's red. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> that is so he's, funny. He's the whitest white boy you will ever <laughs> see. <laughs> and, but I love him so much, and God knows oh, that I, need I love him. I, right? I love it. He's he's an amazing man, amazing man. And so met him at um, at dinner one night. So my friend was at dinner, and she was meeting her husband, and it was just before 
uh, Valentine's Day. So I thought, Ma, okay, she's going to, you know, be here with her husband. Oh, it's nice to see you. She's like, what are you doing out here? I'm like, I know I never come out here. Cause it was just somewhere where I just didn't frequent. Like mm-hmm. I would go to somewhere else. Like this was not the place that I frequented. Um, but that's when it ended up happening. And oh, that's awesome. he, was, he was at their table and we just did a rapid fire interview. So <laughs> I, yeah. Okay, girl. So here's, here's how it went down. I walked up to the table. Interviewed your man. I, I sure did. <laughs> Listen, I sure did. I don't You got time. a job. Do yeah. you have a job? Okay. <laughs> Are yeah. you employed? Okay. <laughs> well, well, it was so funny because I was like, oh, I see you don't have a ring on your finger. Are you dating somebody? Have yeah. you been married? Do you have children? Do you want to have more children? How tall are you? He's like, I'm six one. I'm like, yeah, right. So basically what you're telling me is you're five eight. And he was like, no, I'm six foot. So he stood up and I I hit right in that that little yeah. pocket of chest. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mama got excited. I was like, oh, okay. And then <laughs> I love it. <laughs> then, he, then he had a hat on. I said, oh, you're bald. You know, like I'm trying to find something that's wrong with wrong with him. I mean, first of all, you approach the man like, well, I'm even bothering you. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to interview you, insult you. Okay. Because <laughs> you say we're minding your business and I don't want you minding your business. Okay. <laughs> I totally did that. <laughs> And then I said, I said, well, you should probably take me out. You should probably get my number from my friend and take me out. Yeah, that's probably what she should do. So I'll be hearing from you. And then I walked away. <laughs> that's so and my then- style. I would probably have done the same. That is hilarious. That look, is so you know, funny. Look, right? Like when you get into midlife and you have done all the things exactly you're like we don't got all day we don't i'm I'm looking for somebody to (laughs) hang out with have regular sex with right with me like seriously like right and then you're like oh you're marrying me okay this date (laughs) we're just doing it how come i'm not surprised that is so funny oh my god you got me crying over here lord oh so yeah. then um so then you marry this amazing five foot eight six foot one man yeah. and you said you have a bonus daughter which is awesome i have a bonus yeah. daughter too are they not, not the just... best i love yes. bonus daughters i i love, I love her children. So much. And it's so, it's so great because we can have, um, you know, when I first came into the relationship, what I did was I took her aside and we, we hung out and I said, you know, I just want you to know, like, I'm not trying to be your mom. Like you're grown. My, my job here is to be like another set of ears mentor maybe, or even somebody that you just want to bounce an idea off of. Um, I don't want you to ever yeah. think that yeah. I'm trying to come in here and because she had some, my husband had another relationship that was just really not that good mm. um, prior to me. So it was like months after me that we got together, but I just wanted her to be comfortable yeah. and confident in the fact that I love your dad and I love you and I want the best for both of you. So yeah. it was, it was actually really beautiful and she likes it because I give her my clothes. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, you know what the good thing is, is yeah. you took the pressure off, right? You weren't coming in as I'm the adult, you know, nothing. So I'm going to tell you what to do. Right. I did the when I met my, my bonus daughter, she was only three. Um, so Ooh. she was a peanut because me and my husband have been married 20 years. My second oh, marriage, wow. 20 years. And thank you. He's an amazing dude. And my daughter, my, I call her my daughter because I honestly never see her as nothing other than um, right. because I've raised her since she was three. Her mom is involved, but I just, you know, I've had her in my life and we're so close and I cannot see my life without her. Right. Mm-hmm. But I've also just been her friend, too. Although she calls me mom and we have a lot of great relationship. Yeah. Um, but I, and now she's an adult. Right. And she has a mom. So I'm always yeah. like, you know, you can tell me anything, you know. That's right. So um, if your man's out of line, I'll just kill him, and we all good. We just keep it moving, you know. Oh my gosh, hold, hold the phones right when when their their boyfriend started to come into the to the picture. 
Oh, we had a, we had our birthday this weekend, and we were sitting at um, at lunch, and her boyfriend was starting to ask us questions about finances and just all of this stuff. And I'm looking at, it, I'm like, hmm, why are you asking so many questions? I'm like, what's your intentions with my daughter? Like, right. you know, I need to know what right. are you what are you trying to do here? Right. You know. Meanwhile, he's just like, I just want to learn how to balance my books, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just not like, like, do you have money in the bank? Ball? Like, do you have money in the bank? Are you saving for a house? Like, what are you doing? Right. Well, as long as he's doing it the right way, right? Exactly. Oh, yes, he is. So, he's what? Right. How do you then? How do you then transition that? Like, so, so now yeah. what you do is, I know that you have a podcast, so I want to talk to you yes. about that. Yes. And I know that you're doing also the um, the work that you're doing with the, with women and building them in businesses and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Are you um, are you coaching as well and mentoring and stuff like that as well, or? Yeah, so I do that within the organization that I'm in, in okay. the industry, and so I um, I do I do I set yeah. times aside for people to coach, and you know, coaching is a it's kind of a fun little thing, right? You kind of get into the whole personal aspect of why they do what they do, yeah, and then it sets some goals. But it, it, it really breeds trust. Yeah, a lot. And, and that's what I love is that, you know, when somebody comes on to our organization, they can't really see a whole lot, right? They, they can't see who you are. But when you have that intimate one-on-one coaching, they can really see that you value them, that you are there for them, that you are like for them, not against them, that right. you want them to win. And I, I just love it because it builds trust. So yeah. So I do that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds great. Now, what is it that you, well, first of all, give us the name of your podcast and what is it that your podcast is about? Ah, okay. Midlife Moxie. Love it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm one half of Midlife Moxie and my business partner is Gail. And we met each other, truth be told, we met each other through Zoom, through our, our beauty industry in March. Okay. We became, I, I, I'm very bold, Nina, if you don't notice. No, I didn't notice that at all. I thought, <laughs> poor thing. She's so, she's so introverted. I don't know how she's going to get through this, this interview. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so I, I really loved how she, was just a no nonsense, no BS. I'm going to bring it to the table. This is what I'm doing. You run with me and I'll run with you. I was just like, yes. Like, who are you? Right. Like, right. She's in South Carolina. I'm here in California. And I'm like, who are you? Like, I want to know who you are. So I reached out to her and I was like, we have to connect. Like, you seem like a really, like, just somebody I can learn from. Mm-hmm. Somebody that is willing to teach me some things, but also I feel like we could have a really solid friendship mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you operate like I operate. She's a little bit more um, uh, structured than I am because I'm like, Meh, you know, right. <laughs> but she's the structured one. So it works. And um, we started talking. And then as we started to build our relationship, we realized like we both, I, I think that we both think that we should have been famous. Right. Okay. Because we're so like, doesn't everybody think they're famous? famous? Like, no, no. Nina, everybody (laughs) thinks that they should be famous. I promise you. Okay. No, I know. (laughs) Deep down. I absolutely um, know. (laughs) Nina's all, what are you talking about? I I don't understand what you mean about that at all. I come on here for just the people. <laughs> Don't you know? Um, so, That's see? funny. So, so we were talking and I um, had said, you know, I, I'd always wanted to either like people told me I should write a book or I should do, you know, podcasting or I should do something more than what I'm doing now because I just have a lot. Right. Right. And she was like, oh my gosh, I've always wanted to podcast. And I'm like, we should do a podcast. Like we, we should just do it. So we just, we just said, well, let's do a podcast. Right. 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 In May, we started our brand. That's awesome. Holy crap. 
I mean, it goes fast. I, I, I don't know if, um, if you had this experience, but we felt like it went super fast. Like we had a name, we started to get stuff moving and then we're recording and we have episodes. Right. We are kind of famous. I'm right. Excited. That's so fun. That's so fun. And that's the thing, right? Like a podcasting could be a hard game to get into because, yes. you know, you know, getting your, your voice out there with the other millions of voices that are out there. Right. But like you said, Christina, like when you spoke to Gail or when Gail spoke, you knew that was your people. Right. Yes. And yeah. it's the same with me. I, I, you know, when um, I'm now signed up with Winject and you'll probably, that's what the little commercial is in the beginning, Winject TV, because yeah. I'm on their, on their um, site thing. But when you find your people, you find your people, you yeah. know, so you just be you be authentic, say what you have to say. Don't, don't like sugarcoat anything. That's why mine is, you know, no sugar added because I feel like what is the point? of being of, um, uh, on TV or, or on a podcast and then sugarcoating or lying or not being who you authentically are. You're wasting everybody's time and you're definitely wasting your time because you'll never find your people because nobody knows who the heck you are. Nobody Absolutely. knows you. Absolutely. Like yeah. that's, that's what it's, uh, that's what it's about. It's being authentically you. Yeah. And that's, that's what we wanted to bring to the podcast is like, how could we enter into this space, which is a midlife space, so obviously midlife moxie, and how could we be set apart in the niche that we are in? Because we're both in midlife, and right. we believe at Midlife Moxie that midlife is a season of life. Right. Okay, so are you empty nesting? Are you in the sandwich generation where you're taking care of parents, um, like elderly parents? Are you... Um, having hot flashes like are you perimenopausal right um yeah i know this is gonna sound bad but is your vagina dry like right right yeah. well i mean those are topics that women are who are in midlife are talking about or want Absolutely. to talk about you Absolutely. know so Absolutely. are you guys yeah, talking talk to each it. other or do you bring people in how do you do your yeah so we do both um we have had um some really great people on so far and we just launch every um every tuesday tuesday and it's just awesome like i absolutely love the conversation because every conversation is is different so our last our last one was with jen whitmer and she is an enneagram specialist and so she was talking about how to have better relationships um knowing who you be and you know, working out of that because when you know who you are, yeah, you can yeah. serve your community better. So it, it, it was just an awesome, awesome conversation. Then we had a women's health um, nurse practitioner on, Rachel, and she was talking about what happens in menopause. Like, you guys, it is real. Like, right. <laughs> It does. It does get real. Like, real. I was at the gym, Nina, this morning because I love I love working out. Oh, that's the other thing. I love working out. Love it. Oh, um, great. So, so I, I was at the gym this I morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get there, girlfriend. I'm not there yet. Well, okay. you just call me. We'd be accountability partners. We'd, we'd okay. Be fine. We'd be fine. Okay. Um, so so I was I was at the gym and it's like 62 degrees in the gym and I'm like sweating. I'm all no. Right. And so I'm going around and I'm turning all the fans on and <laughs> they're looking at me and I said, What? You can't you can't turn these off. Like I will turn them off later, but you guys have to keep these on. They're like, it's 62 degrees in here. I'm like, I don't care. Just right. Quiet. So it's hot. It gets hot. So we were talking about, you know, what does that look? Doesn't it? Like you sweat yes. at night, like sweat at night. And then when you wake up in the morning, your hair is all like this because you've right. been sweating and you're like, right. what happened? What did I do? Right. I just like, blew my hair out yesterday. <laughs> yes, I totally understand. I totally understand. It's a thing. <laughs> now, now, did, this, this, did the podcast evolve or was this definitely what you guys wanted to talk about from the beginning? Um, We, we just find it, we found a commonality in, in our lives mm. so that we knew what we were going to talk about. And I think Gail had more of, um, an understanding or even an inkling of 
maybe we should talk about midlife because I was, my son was actually deployed and, um, my dad, I was still going back and forth to the hospital with my dad and now he's home. So we, we do all this other stuff with him now, but it was like, there was just this season. And then my son had to go on some other things and I was just kind of like a wreck. Right. And she was going through this stuff with her son where he was, you know, he's got one more class and then he's graduating. And just that, that chapter of her life was closing. Right. And, and so we just kind of found that commonality in our stories. And that's how it was really birthed is like, we need to be talking about this because what did you learn from your mom? I know I learned from my mom, she would take her stomach and she would, and she didn't have a big stomach, but she would take her stomach and she would show me like, this is what happens in midlife. And I'm like, that's so scary. And she's like, and I'm hot. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Right. You know, I mean, it's horrible. So she didn't tell me that your vagina dries up. She right. didn't tell me to take hormones. She didn't tell me that I needed to eat better. Like none of that stuff. And let's just, let me just be clear. My vagina is not dried up anymore. Right. <laughs> I got that fixed. We really want to get, get girls on here. In case they didn't like, let's cut it out of the it. podcast. I'm cutting it out. Just cut it out. In case any of you listening are wondering if she has a dry vagina, she doesn't, guys. This is straight. <laughs> Nina, I'm never oh, going to be invited I'm on dying. again. I'm I, dying. I, oh, you're so funny. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christina, hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Okay. It's just it's who I be. You know, it's just who I be, girl. I so, love it. I'm going to have to yeah. immediately go subscribe to this podcast because yes, this yes. is hilarious. Yeah, and I'd be on there. Anytime you want me on there, let me know. I'd love to go on. Absolutely. I would absolutely. love to. You know, we, we love swapping. <laughs> right. And, and not in the weird <laughs> way. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're off the vagina topic. No, she's talking yeah, about we're off of podcast. That. Off right. of it. Yeah. Oh, my so God. Hilarious. I, yeah. Yeah, so okay. I want to know, and I'm sure everybody who's listening is like, this woman is hilarious. So you have to let us know all of the stuff that we can do to support you. So whether it's your social media handles, yeah, yeah. Uh, your podcast, all that great stuff. So hit us with it. Yeah. So you guys can find me at um, on Instagram at one sassy massy. Um, so that's at the number one sassy. And you all know how to spell sassy. And massy is M A S S E. Why? Oh my gosh, I almost said I. What is going on? My brain. <laughs> um, and then you can actually head over to um, if you have a uh, Apple or um, or um, Android and you have sh uh, Spotify, you can find our um, podcast there. And it's called Midlife Moxie. So go and listen, subscribe, give us a review. But if it's not a five, don't leave it. Okay. Right. Thank that's you. right. Nobody <laughs> wants lower reviews. No, thank no, you. No. <laughs> no, no, thank you. And then you can also email us at um, midlife moxie podcast at gmail.com or you can go to just midlifemoxie.net. And we have Suwag. So shameless plug for our t shirts. Just so you know. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, they're super cute. You okay. Know. And they could probably find that when they go on there anyway, right? Can yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Sure. Oh my gosh. You are so much fun. Thank you for being here. I needed this this evening because I had a really rough day at work. So this was oh, hilarious. Girl. Love it. Girl, I'm glad Love it. I could give it to you. Me this too. Is awesome. <laughs> Oh, guys, thank you so much for hanging out here at Straight Talk No Sugar Added. She is freaking awesome. So make sure that you go ahead and check out Midlife Moxie because you will not regret it. I thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and share. And leave me a review. Like she said, only if it's a good one. Don't leave That's it right. otherwise. Don't thank you so it. much for being here, guys. This is Nina Perez. This is Straight Talk No Sugar Added. Until next time. This broadcast is brought to you by Winject Studios. We are an all-in-one educational platform for podcasters that revolutionizes how hosts leverage content to increase engagement with listeners, downloads, and income. We come together to focus on community, 
collaboration, and collective impact. For more information on how you can interact directly with our hosts, access exclusive live content with offers you can't get anywhere else from our official partners, join our purpose-driven community by visiting www.winject.com. If you're ready to build a career doing what you love, then we're ready to see you there.